Bolvenaka. First of all, let me sincerely apologize for the slight delay in getting here, but uh, there is a story attached to it. We were actually caught behind the Honorable Prime Minister, and you, as you know, protocol says that I can't go past him. <laughs> and he was driving at 60 kilometers an hour, so I apologize for being here a little late. Ladies and gentlemen, in the last two years, every one of us has developed a greater appreciation for the value of the tourism industry today in Fiji. And we are not talking about the one-third contribution to our GDP. We're actually talking about the job, or the jobs that it actually creates, the relationships with the environment, and the contribution to a business's bottom line, and its ability to uplift all our communities. What we have also had, that we've now got a greater appreciation of, its, of the need for continued investments in our industry. And whether it's upgrading our rooms, or creating more authentic experiences, or actually developing new products. Ladies and gentlemen, as many of you will know, some of you have traveled around the world. In Fiji, we are actually blessed. We are blessed because we are in the middle of one of the best places in the world. And you know, this is just absolutely fantastic. And many people actually don't realize how, how lucky we are to be in the midst of one of the best places in the world. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I'm actually pleased to officially launch and experience one of, the, one of Fiji's tourism's newest products, Seventh Heaven, Fiji. As Fijians, we were born to welcome, we were born to showcase, to connect, because it's in the very DNA that we possess. I can see that today, all the way from the boat ride here, it's actually just such a wonderful experience for anybody to actually come here. I want to take this opportunity also to thank Mr. Eddie Rotterville and the man behind this creativity. Seventh Heaven is truly, as the name suggests, one of the most recognizing features of the business is that it shares the ethos of what the industry is actually built on. The care of our pristine environment. During construction where possible, they have recycled, plastics were used, all waste is safely disposed of and recycled. And Seventh Heaven actually operates on solar energy. I also understand <coughs> that the entire structure is assembled and manufactured right here in Fiji. So this is truly a complete Fijian experience. Recently, in fact, last week, ladies and gentlemen, Seventh Heaven, as part of its eco initiatives, began their coral planting program with the ADE Fiji, Aqu Aquaculture Development for the Environment. And that's a commitment of planting 14,000 new corals this year. So, ladies and gentlemen, that actually deserves a huge round of applause. <laughs> I'd also like to acknowledge the Matangali and the Yabustas who are actually with us today. Your blessing and your support to the Seventh Heaven and the advancement of the Fijian tourism industry is what brings us here today. Without you, this doesn't happen. I'm also glad that we have the media here with us today, who like any other tourism ambassadors, helps connect Fiji to the world and shows the rest of the world what we have. We are truly blessed. And I urge you to share with others what Fiji has to offer. Ladies and gentlemen, Seventh Heaven opened its doors in April. And it's taken almost four to five years of hard work to turn this into a $4 million investment. They're adding to the growth of the Fijian economy and more importantly, supporting the livelihoods of about 36 Fijians and dozens of supporters and suppliers by actually creating jobs. I read earlier that the idea of a floating bar and a restaurant came to Eddie and Johnny while they were sitting under a tree here in Fiji. 
and you saw a new opportunity and you tried something new and you saw the demand and you've made the investment. So ladies and gentlemen, from January alone, this has now become a part of our tourism portfolio. You can see Fiji received about 284,167 visitors, which is about 56.4% of the arrivals in the same period in 2019. So we're already halfway there. In July, we received the highest number of Australians ever in a given month. So these numbers, ladies and gentlemen, show that we're well in line with a full recovery by 2024. Now, when these tourists actually come, there will be more, and there'll be more coming. They will want to do more than actually just stay in their rooms. And we know this. And similarly with locals, we want to see more of them to come here, coming here too. And this keeps our tourism going. This is where experience, experiences such as Seventh Heaven can actually take advantage. I'm told that the future bookings for Seventh Heaven are actually are healthy with a huge demand in Ford bookings with a well into 2023. So as tourism stakeholders, and I'm talking about all of us, we are all the architects of what is to follow for the industry. To Eddie and your partners, I hope you continue to invest in your business and your staff and the service that you provide. So not a day, not a day for long speeches, ladies and gentlemen, but once again, we must truly, truly appreciate what we have. And we must also ensure that we always protect our environment that we actually share with the rest of the world. So to conclude with ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to thank each and every one of you for, in, for your incredible resilience and encourage you to continue to inspire towards excellence to all the staff members here, to all that have partaken in, in today's activities and, and will continue to do so in the, in the future. And to the Vanua, thank you very much, sir. All of you, thank you for making Fiji such a hospitable, wonderful destination for all of those around the world that wish to come here. So with those few words, I officially declare the seventh heaven open. Thank you very much, Vanua. <laughs>